men in the audience would go wild. They would literally fight each other. They'd break their glasses. They would shout, kill each other. Yes, you heard me. Men in Turkey would kill each other for the bussy history. <laughs> and nothing has changed. The only problem with that, at least in America, is that that's been suppressed. But you know, this has not gone away. You get some good bussers out there. I don't know. Even the most masculine of men start to get a little down bad. So as many of you know, I identify as a femboy. Now, I am a non-binary person, I am trans, my gender is an amoeba, I really don't care about it at all, I use any and all pronouns, it is what it is. But the femboy descriptor, which in my mind is more of an aesthetic descriptor and not anything intrinsically related to a gender identity or sexuality, the way that it manifests in society seems to be more toward aesthetic descriptor, so I still use it. and. Also, it's good marketing, because people know the term, it's memefied. I've had a lot to say about it, because obviously, whether I like it or not, the term will be applied to me. If I didn't want to be called the femboy, it would still be used for me, just because of how memefied the term is. And there are people less feminine than me. Essentially, if there is an AMAB person that presents even vaguely femininely, they are likely to be called a femboy, and that manifests in negative ways a lot of the time, uh, but not always. That's a future topic for another video that I do plan to do in the future. But anyway, as a result, I've got a lot to say in the topic, and Professor Lando, Lando PhD, who we've watched one video from before, has put out a video three days ago on Femboys Explained, and... I'm curious, you know, I want to learn a little bit more about what it is a femboy is. So let's find out. What are we talking about today? Femboys. Colloquially Cog. might be called fembology. I think technically speaking is femboyology. Again, colloquially as femboys with an I. In terms of pronunciation, I think we are talking about them boys. Just really quickly, I have never cared for the B-O-I for boy. But maybe it's because I'm not that uwu soft type. Like my aesthetic might be a little bit, but like my actual demeanor, my personality is not that. I have a very masculine personality and I like it very much. Um, I've never really cared for this too much, but that's just me. As, as most of our definitions do, coming from Wikipedia, femboy is a slang term for a young male who displays traditionally feminine characteristics. So a mm -hmm. male who displays traditionally right feminine characteristics a little bit of uh, history the word femboy emerges by at least the 90s the 1990s and beginning as a sort of derogatory term for yep. a man who didn't adhere to here's the word again traditional standards of masculinity uh being a slang shortening of the word feminine right right yeah here. look at this oh no right here femboy equals trap i this is so bad dude anime and its consequences have been a disaster for the human race we'll get into that when we get there i'm pretty sure as to why i say this thank you very much johnson for the raid hope you had a good stream shouts out everybody go follow and boy obviously coming from the fact that they are male it, it does seem but not necessarily in my opinion maybe we'll get into that that uh, especially in internet culture uh that femboy the term femboy has emerged as sort of a positive term, uh, sure. appealing to a range of individuals who might be attracted um, to a mix of feminine and masculine uh, traits, uh, perhaps even prompting a genre of, of internet media. In recent times, uh, the platform Pornhub oh has boy. even introduced the term femboy as a searchable category. Wait, really? Like there's actually a category for it? On its website, and that happened in 2013. And, Wait, uh, really? and since then, huh. for the I don't know how true that is. I feel like I've looked for this before, obviously, because I also find femboys attractive. But like, I've never actually seen like it in the category selection. Transgender is in the category selection. And usually femboys are just lumped into the trans category, even though they don't necessarily have to be, considering you don't have to be trans to be a femboy. In fact, most people's understanding of what a femboy is, is usually a cis person, a cis man that just presents femininely, gender nonconformingly. But usually they just combine the two because it's very granular and it's just easier to keep all of the shit in the same space because it might not be the most popular category. But anyway. So, you know, again, we're, we're going back to the idea of, of, 
uh, the origins of femboy being, you know, uh, Wikipedia states derogatory and, and becoming more and more, you could say perhaps is co-opted. I would like to make the comparison to like the word weeaboo, weeb, uh, starting as a der something uh, a little derogatory, but being being used sometimes tongue in cheek, but definitely becoming a, a sort of positive. It, yeah, it's still derogatory. Weebs out. Get them out. out. I don't want to see them. I don't want to hear about them. Get him out. The term, right, as I just said, it, it, be, it came to be adopted as a self-descriptor. A uh, descriptor for guys who tend toward presenting feminine, uh, a scale of femininity, some more than others, some less, uh, for non-sexual purposes. True. Right? This person Very important. Femininity as a form of everyday expression, gender expression. This is a big problem. And the reason why is actually quite simple. It's the fetishization of femininity. Essentially what it is, is that femininity in a general sense is incredibly fetishized and sexualized in our society. Now, femininity is not inherent to any gender identity or sex. Like women are not the only people allowed to be feminine. Much the same way for masculinity, women can be masculine, men can be masculine. However, women are the primary demographic to have exhibited and expressed themselves in a feminine way for a long time. And because of negative societal forces, men have not been able to for a long time either. Women have been dealing with the negative repercussions in society of the fetishization of femininity and the sexualization of femininity for a long time, perhaps since the dawn of time. And feminine Feminists have been working to undo this problem and equalize the genders, as it were. So what we need to do to help everybody is work to defetishize femininity. It helps everybody. Women, who are the primary demographic to be feminine in society for a long time and still are, and also allows for other people who are not expected to be feminine to be allowed to be feminine without much issue. So for instance, let's say there is a man out there, okay? This is a person who identifies as a man, and they don't know. They've got some ideas like, hmm, I've seen some pictures of femboys on the internet. That looks kind of intriguing to me. I've kind of want to try it myself, but then I go online and I see the way people talk about femboys and it's like, oh my God, every time femboys are coming up, it's like, oh my God, femboys are all uwu -woo cum sluts. They're all super sexual all the time. There's all these like inherent pieces of fetishization and sexualization to what a femboy is. Even in media depiction like anime, that person who is currently trying to figure out if they want to be feminine or not, if they want to dip their toes into the femboy aesthetic or not, that person might be less excited to do that because of a lot of these negative assumptions for what femboys are that person might actually feel pressured away from trying to do that kind of stuff and they might not even know if they would have enjoyed it and they'll never know because they'll get pressured away from it because they might be a top right they might be dominant they might not want to be seen as that submissive uwu cum slut that for whatever reason society is dictated that femboys are now the reason why by the way that femboys do have that connotation is because women have that connotation unfortunately because women the primary demographic to express themselves femininely that is unfortunately a big part of what women have to deal with women expressing their sexuality in a positive way about themselves is inherently seen as like being like overtly sexual whenever a woman dresses in a way that shows a little bit more cleavage or you know shows a bit of the curves of the body or more skin they're immediately assumed to be looking for sex which is not true all of the time. People should be allowed to dress in whatever way they want, you know, you know, barring dress code or whatever. I don't think people should be running around naked necessarily, but people should be allowed to dress the way they want without all of these negative connotation, but that's just how it is. Like people with bigger breasts, when they have no say in whether or not they're gonna have big or small breasts, are inherently sexualized on the basis of the fact that they just have bigger breasts. And that's just, you know, a big part of the fetishization of femininity. So essentially, anybody can be feminine. It is not not intrinsic to any group. It might happen more likely in certain groups, like women, for instance, but anybody can be that. And if we defetishize femininity and do work to do so, it helps everybody. What if we just start fetishizing masculinity? I assume you're memeing, but that's not the way to fix it. <laughs> Being a femboy, you know, you know that. that doesn't necessarily tie to any sexual orientation. Very often, question is, is it gay? Complicated Good answer. question. I know you want a yes or no answer, and it simply, it cannot be done. That is true. It's contextual. It's a spectrum, essentially. So, so the question is, are femboys gay, right? The way we go down this 
thought process, this dialectic, as it were, you know, Marx didn't consider femboys, he failed to, is being attracted to femboys gay as a man. My answer is, not necessarily, and here's the, the, the reasoning, okay? So, we have to start with, what is a femboy, okay? In my mind, the definition of a femboy is an overall feminine person with some masculine traits. Let me get my blackboard out. So, what is a femboy? In my mind. Now, I have a different definition than the one Professor Lando has laid out, but essentially, a femboy is an overall feminine person with some masculine traits. I feel like that makes sense. So, what is the opposite? Chat, can anybody tell me? What is the opposite of a femboy? So most people are saying tomboy. Now, I seem to disagree. I think a mask girl is actually the opposite of a femboy, and here's why. So a mask girl would be an overall masculine person with some feminine traits. And that seems to make sense, to be the opposite of a femboy, right? So when we see femboys, if we look at depictions of this online, this is almost like the stereotype immediately. We've got a person with longer hair, the crop top on, we're showing a lot of skin. It's essentially one of the most overt representations of feminine dress you could possibly think of, but on a person with some masculine characteristic. If you look up mask girl, you just see like what most people would expect to be like tomboyish. So this person is presenting pretty masculinely. But like, there seems to be a bigger overlap between tomboy and mask girl, or what you would expect it to be. Mostly because mask girls are underrepresented in the way that I think they manifest. So here's, yeah, there's actually a subreddit for it. This is a more masculine presentation. But like, we assume that this person is AFAB, assigned female at birth. So what's interesting about that is, like this person is wearing makeup, they have longer hair, they've got earrings, it's jewelry is seen to be, it's changing, but it, for a while it was seen to be more feminine. If this person was AMAB and they, they identified as a man, they would be considered more feminine. But since this person is assumedly identifies as a woman, then they just look like a tomboy. So like, if we look at examples of what a femboy is, it's essentially a person who identifies as a man but dresses like a woman. That's essentially what it is. Femboy is kind of just an aesthetic? It is. No, in my opinion, femboy has no inherent connection to gender identity or sexuality. The way that it manifests in society is such that it's more like an aesthetic descriptor. It's not actually intrinsic to any gender identity. It's just that the probability that a person who identifies as a femboy is actually identifying also as a man is higher than a person calling themselves a femboy but identifying as not a man, you know? Okay, there's an additional element here. So a femboy, overall feminine person, some masculine traits, usually, but not always, assigned male at birth. This is usually what you're going to expect to find. And then in that same way, we have to do the same for this. So usually, but not always, assigned female at birth, okay? This seems to be what my mind has devised as a very good way to describe these aesthetic descriptors. <laughs> so, if we try to answer the question, is being attracted to femboys gay? It's a good question. So, in my mind, obviously this is an incredibly interpersonal question. However, I think there is a interesting line of thought to go through here. The next question is, why are we attracted to femboys? And there could be a variety of answers here. So if we're attracted to a femboy, it seems like you're probably going to be attracted to the femininity. The answer is usually going to be that, oh, you're attracted to this person. One, because knowing nothing else about the person, you could just assume this person is a woman. Eventually, you find out more about them and you find out, oh, this person identifies as a femboy. This person person might identify as a man, this person may or may not have a penis, okay? But you're attracted to the femininity of this person first and foremost. If it's solely the aesthetic that you are attracted to, if you're only attracted to that person because they look like what you assume a woman to look like, it's not gay. So the next question is, what about other elements of their identity? So you could say, oh, their personality. Feminine personalities, society expects to be softer, more demure, almost maternal in the way that they interact with other people. They're very comforting. They're easily approachable. They carry themselves in a more feminine way. If the personality elements are more feminine, you might not be gay still. Next up we have, what about secondary sexual characteristics? Which is any physical characteristic developing a puberty which distinguishes between the sexes, but is not directly involved in reproduction. 
production. So this would be things like, what does their chest look like, for instance? So if this is an AMAB person, if this person has like gotten breast implants or has been like on hormones to the point where they've developed breasts, even though they're AMAB, then you might still be straight because those things are expected to be elements or characteristics of women in society and are expected to be feminine traits. So at that point, you might still be straight. So now we get into the nitty gritty. Now we get into the ooh. Now we get into the spicy element of this conversation. What about the genitals, often mispronounced as genitals? If this person has cock and balls, how do you feel? about them? That's the question. The sex. So if it turns out that you're not attracted to the fact that this person has a penis, you're probably not gay. So how do we define gay? This was actually necessary and I should have done it before. Webster's Dictionary defines homosexual as a sexual attraction to people of one's own sex. And I will include here, because I'm based in progressive build, will include here or gender. Especially when we talk about aesthetics and when we're assessing why we might find someone attractive. So if homosexual is a sexual attraction to people of one's own sex or gender, if you're only attracted to the person because they present in an incredibly feminine way, aka a femboy, then you're probably not immediately gay. If you assess their personality and it is more feminine and you're attracted to them because their personality is feminine, then you're more than likely not gay given this definition. However, if it is the masculine elements of their personality that they might have that you find to be more attractive, like if they act like me, for instance, where I have a very overtly masculine personality, we might be treading upon some gay territory, some garatory. So if it is the case that you find the cock and balls to be a turnoff, you're probably not gay or you're not entirely gay, right? But that's, it, it gets a little spicy it, it, and it's difficult. And which is why Professor Lando does say that it's a hard answer to give. So essentially you have to go down this line of questioning to figure out all this stuff. And the final question is, in my opinion, why do you care? This is the ultimate question that you need to answer for yourself. And there are a variety of answers you can give for this. For one, you could be like, oh, well, I'm just trying to assess my uh, sexuality and I'm just trying to like figure it out more. Am I pansexual? Am I bi? Am I straight? That's fine. You can do that kind of introspection. In fact, I would encourage it. But unfortunately, in our society, it might also be the case that you care because you're homophobic, let's say. Maybe you're overtly homophobic. Let's say you're one of the many people that come into my Twitch chat or my YouTube comments and are spouting all this kind of homophobic rhetoric or transphobic rhetoric about me. If you're like one of those people and you're overtly homophobic in that way, then the answer could be, oh, this person's homophobic. That's why this person cares if they're considered gay or not. I mean, it's an irrational position to be in, being homophobic. Uh, so the next answer, answer might be, well, oh, societal repercussion. If my family finds out that I'm gay, potentially, that could be a problem for me because of the homophobia of the people around them in their family, in their local community, and whatever else. If those people find out, could be the case that you could face negative social repercussion for other people finding out that you're gay because you like fanboys or whatever. And additionally to that, why else would you care? I mean, I think those are the two major ones. Uh, insecurity can also play a big part in it, and those other things are linked to the insecurity that people have. A big thing that I notice in men that are incredibly homophobic is it's literally just a coping mechanism for to deal with their own insecurity. Those men might actually be more gay than they let on, but their homophobia is just a coping mechanism to mask it. To be in denial of the fact that they might have some gay elements of themselves, even if they're not fully gay. I say all this to say, first of all, you shouldn't care. Second of all, you might have to care because of social repercussion. Third of all, if you're homophobic and you're asking yourself this question, you're literally just hurting yourself yourself. Stop it. Get some help. But I hope this has been helpful for some people. Essentially, the take is, if you're attracted to femboys, and the reason for why you're attracted to them is the fact that they're feminine, and essentially how you expect women to be, and you go down the, the logic line, and you like, oh, their personality is very feminine, their secondary sexual characteristics, maybe these people are very curvy, you might still just be straight. Because it seems like for a lot of men in our society, they may not necessarily be attracted to women. They might not necessarily be attracted to females, you know, the people with the certain set of chromosomes and the vagina. They're attracted to the ways that those people most commonly present themselves in an aesthetic capacity in our society. Simplified, you might just be attracted to femininity, not women. Which might be a revolutionary thought for you, because that was for me. Is it gay? Complicated answer. And it simply, it cannot be done. To, to, to tackle the question, are femboys gay? Very common question. So, oh wait, oh, I misinterpreted the question entirely. This person is saying, are femboys gay? I thought the question was, am I gay for being attracted to femboys? Wait, 
the question probably is are femboys gay in that is liking femboys gay but so so to answer this question in the literal sense are femboys gay there's a good chance that they're pan or gay but there is a caveat to that there are femboys out there that are straight they exist there are femboys out there that are asexual to be a femboy it's not essential to be gay that's a very two-head way of thinking that'd be like are men gay no but they can be are women gay no but they can be it's 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 an easy question to answer. Um, a little uninformed and, you know, a little ignorant, if you, you ask me. But I'm not here to judge. I'm here to, to teach. In quantum mechanics. What is this? Schrodinger's cat. Schrodinger's gay. Let's go. Schrodinger's cat, literally a cat in this thought experiment, um, in, is encased in this, in this box, right? And there's a flask of poison right here and a radioactive source. Ooh, we got some good all right so i been. i do watch the chat here this person says to like femboys i assume is not inherently gay it has nothing to do with sexuality simply fashion and expression true thank god there are some reasonable people in that chat i don't know what the chat usually looks like but there are people using the t slur in there that i don't like so uh so you know if an internal monitor um in this case a, a geiger counter detects radioactivity the flask right here is shattered releasing the noxious poison, which in turn kills the cat. The Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics implies that after a while, the cat is simultaneously both alive or dead. I feel like this is, I don't know. I, I thought I was being very complicated and complex in how I tried to answer the question, but this is even more so. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Why are we bringing quantum mechanics into the equation? What is going on here? When you literally open the box, you can't see it both be alive and dead. It's either going to be alive or dead. But before you observe it to be, to look inside and, and see it, it's either alive or dead until you confirm it. Strohdinger's cat or another aka Strohdinger's Femboy. Gay and not gay at the same time. It doesn't feel right to say it's strictly gay. But Wait, it was definitely not straight. This harkens Wait, back to the definition about? of gender expression being, you know, feminine as a guy. Um, the world is not black and white. Binaries. We work in shades of gray. Yeah, no, my answer to this question, my lesson was infinitely better. I'm sorry, because it's more precise. It's very easy. Essentially, we arrived at, if you're attracted to femboys because they present in an incredibly feminine way, and that's as far as it goes, you're probably still straight. If you find out that their personality is also very feminine and you're attracted to them in that way, you're probably still straight. If it turns out that you're attracted to them because they have like, like maybe they've been on HRT, they have breasts or they've had implants or they have a more curvy body just because of their fat distribution, you're probably still straight, but not necessarily so. Which is why I would assume, this is why Lando decided to put the uh, the Schrodinger's thing in because it's hard to say. And then if you find out the genitals uh, of the person, if it is the case that they have a penis, you stop being attracted to them. You're probably not gay. You're probably still straight. But like I say, like, I think this is an easier metric to kind of figure this out. Being a femboy, dressing effeminate, again, can be a sort of gender expression role. It doesn't always have to be sexual. However, uh, maybe a little misguided to completely ignore that side of things. So, you know, we're going to be talking about, uh, and you know, this is, this is a subject that I'm uh, very familiar with. In fact, uh, our groundbreaking research on this subject is what got me my initial platform here at Ligma University. We're going to be talking about the bussy. The why, bussers. Why is it so submissive and breedable? You know, we talk about the bussy, we talked about submissive and breedable, and that the intersection, the union rather, is bussy, but we don't, we never answer the question, why the bussy? On the surface level, one might consider a male's entrance to be the exact opposite of, of breedable. Uh, when compared to the conventional woman's bussy or wussy, as I call it. Yeah. So the funny thing about this is that um, vagina is actually a newer term. But yes, it is the case that wussy is actually what the actual understandable term for now known as the vagina of what that is. Beforehand, it was not. Beforehand, it was the wussy, which is obviously a spinoff of the bussy. Little known fact. I think it has to do with subversion. The fact that the male entrance is not supposed to be bred makes it that much more 
desirable. Like a cookie jar that your mom left out. You can only have one after dinner. Don't go near that cookie jar. You know, don't go, hey, hey, get out of my, get away from my bussy. Get away from my bussers. Anyway, regardless of like the actual points being made, uh, apparently they covered the bussers in the, uh, in a previous episode. For those of you who don't know, the bussy, the bussers is essentially just what is used to refer to typically a man's anus and rectum. And the reason why it's called a bussy is because a colloquial term to refer to a vagina is the pussy, P-U-S-S-Y. So essentially bussy, so you essentially you take the P away and you add the B and the B comes from either boy for boy pussy or butt for butt pussy. And I think both are applicable. So for instance, if there is a person who identifies as a man and wants their like asshole to be called a bussy because the asshole just doesn't sound that great for most people, or there could be, um, so for instance, there are trans women out there that will either or just refer to their asshole as a pussy if they don't have, if they haven't had like bottom surgery, if they just have a, a cock and balls and an asshole, uh, they'll just want it to be referred to as a pussy or they'll use bussy for butt pussy or boy pussy, depending on how fluid their gender identity is. So that's what that is. Now, there is an interesting conversation to be had here. I have a very big take. I remember seeing on Twitter, there were people that have said, and these like posts have gotten like tens of thousands of likes or whatever, where they're like, oh my God, there's no such thing as a bussy and an asshole. Why is there a word for it? It's the same thing. You don't have enough experience if that's your take. You do not know enough. There is an incredible difference between a bussy and an asshole. So Quite simply, the way that I would posit this question to you, can you put an object that is, let's say, a one inch diameter, three inch circumference object in your ass? And let's just say like a, and it's five inches long. Can you do that without much effort or preparation, without much discomfort or pain? If not, you don't have a bussy, my friend. To have a bussy entails a lot of labor that you are just obviously not privy to. There's a lot of training that goes into with very mild preparation. The preparation you might only need is like just lube to be able to accept an object like that into your ass. If you're not prepared for that, that could be very painful, uncomfortable, and even damaging. So to say that there is no such thing as a between a bussy and an ass, not only is just factually incorrect, it's also counter-revolutionary and classist. No, I'm just kidding. It also erases the amount of labor that goes into bottoming, especially for somebody that bottoms exclusively with their ass. And I just think that's messed up. I think that we should not be erasing the amount of labor that bottoms have to do in society. As a leftist, I have a very big appreciation for laborers. I have a very big want to get people the compensation they deserve for their labor. And I'm sick and tired of all this bullshit. This anti-labor bullshit. To breed another male. To dominate another male. I mean, what is more masculine than that? True! I can't think of anything more masculine than making another male submit their bussy to you. True. The ultimate act of masculinity. In fact, the ultimate act of heterosexuality. If I've ever seen it. True! Spider you cannot claim to be heterosexual if you cannot bring another man to hands-free cum to have a prostate orgasm by penetrating them, you just can't call yourself straight. I'm sorry. You have not done the work. Who is the apex predator? Who is the apex bussy blaster in the wild? Eat me or get eaten. A little bit of history. Not sure how you pronounce this. Kolchek? Kokek. Kolsek? Um, what is the Kolchek? The Kolchek, plural being Kolchekler in Turkish, was typically a very Turk handsome young male, um, unfortunately perhaps a slave, uh, raucous, or a dancer who usually cross-dressed in feminine attire and was employed as an entertainer. Isn't there also this um, idea in, I think, the Philippines? I remember just seeing a meme about it. I don't know if it's actually true. Where like feminine men in the Philippines, like historically, it's not like been the same in the West in that like it's, ooh, you can't do that. You know, it was more of like a readily known and more or less like people didn't care about it kind of thing or maybe even accepted thing. I could be wrong. I don't know. Could be incorrect. But there are elements of history where this is the thing. It's not intrinsic to people that masculine equals man, feminine equals woman, right? It's not always been this way. And to be essentialist in that way is just a historical, you know, that's just how it is. I don't have any pictures. Of course, pictures didn't exist back then, but I imagine something like this. 
cold check before starting their- I appreciate, I know this is just a mask, like a face covering, but I also appreciate that it looks like a big mustache, which is also fine. Like feminine people can have facial hair. I appreciate that. Uh, these Turkish dancers, these cold checks, male dancers, would dance among the spectators among? to rile them up, to get them more excited. Um, and this is this really speaks to how, how, you know, we talk about why the bussy. This is why. The competition to garner the attention of these kocheks by people sitting in the audience often caused so much commotion and, and altercations, fights. Men in the audience would go wild. They would literally fight each other. They'd break their glasses. They would shout, kill each other. Yes, you heard me. Men in Turkey would kill each other for the bussy <laughs> history. And nothing has changed. The only problem with that, at least in America, is that that's been suppressed. But, you know, this has not gone away. You get some good bussers out there. I don't know. Even the most masculine of men start to get a little down bad. So it, it's kind of like in, um, I don't know, it, I hear this reference a lot. Is it in, like, ancient Rome or Greece or whatever? Where, like, you weren't considered gay or whatever the fuck unless you were bottoming? So, like, fucking another man was, like, chill? The only time, like, you got any kind of repercussion societally is like if you were the one being fucked as a man and the reason why we like it so much is because it, again it's in the blood of our ancestors i think we would be wrong to talk about femboys without at least mentioning the word trap uh-oh uh-oh i listen sometimes lando's got some sussy wussy takes in my opinion and i think mostly it's just because he's memeing like he's trying to play up memes and stuff a lot of it is that he is um being a bit more mimetic and trying to add a lot more humor into it and not being like strictly very clinical sterile and educational so hopefully this is a good segment but we'll see i do not like this word but oh thank god Oh, there's a but after that. But, uh oh. But to not talk about this word. Okay, thank God. In discussion with them, boys, it, it's just ignoring the obvious. The implication of the word trap implies this, like, secretive, like almost malicious, like undercover, like you're tricking pe people, right? Deceitful, like you're tricking them, or, or you're you're trapping them, right? And so you know the origins of the word, I think, were referring to like an anime mm -hmm. um a boy that is that is effeminate that looks like a girl right sometimes more attractive than the girl i think originally it was supposed to stay you know in terms of fictional realm right but i don't know who co-opted this word I, I also think it's still problematic in the fictional sense like if you just use it in like fiction only I, it's still problematic because it's going to be applied to people in real life i really don't like this use of the word and why i so explain why please it's being used like with malicious intent it's being used as a like a derogatory term right first and foremost but there's a secondary aspect that i think we aren't even acknowledging which is that it's fen like fundamentally flawed and wrong to equate the word trap with with a femboy or to equate the idea of a trap with a femboy why because i'm not being fooled i'm actively seeking out the dick and the bus this, this is not the way to talk about this unfortunately i hope we get to a better one but this is not the way to do it unfortunately femboys will still confuse other people so say there is a man that does not want to engage with somebody who has a penis and they find a femboy out there that has a very feminine voice feminine demeanor feminine aesthetic and then eventually gets to the point where they have some kind of interpersonal relationship romantically or sexually and then they find out that person has a penis, trans panic defense still happens, that femboy in that situation might be in an unsafe situation because of the insecurity of that man, and they might be, unfortunately, in a situation where they might be physically, sexually assaulted or killed, which is not good, obviously. But hopefully we get to that. I mean, we still got time left. I'm not being fooled. My intention is first and foremost that these are men, that they have dick. Well, the, the difficulty with that is that that's just you, right? Like, that's just Professor Lando or whoever else he's, like, trying to be in this situation. That's not everybody. And we'd be foolish to think that anybody who's attracted to femboys is necessarily looking for men who are incredibly feminine. Again, forget the, forget the derogatory usage of it. It's just simply not right. It, it, it's counterintuitive. 
to the modern appreciation, um, the modern um, usage of people being femboys. Because I, you know, I think if you're if you're a male and you want to be a femboy, I don't think that. Using the pragmatic or practical argument to smart strategically is to not further upset his weave audience. I feel like if you went for the principal take, they would see it as an SJW move or something. Maybe, but I, I don't know that it, it educates people enough away from using the term or away from like any internalized transphobia they might have. But hopefully you could move them further to that in the future. Hopefully. Did I just fuck up my makeup? No, I didn't. Okay, thank God. Holy shit. It can be a sort of empowering feeling you can be a femboy and not be afraid to say that I can be effeminate and a male. I'm not, I'm not trapping anyone. I'm not fooling anyone. That's not my intention. Well, yeah, but th this, the difficulty with this is that nobody self-describes as a trap. Nobody is going out there and being like, okay, I self-describe as a trap and I'm doing this with the express purpose of tricking other men into getting into engages with me. This is an incredibly fictionalized idea that does not happen in society in any way that actually impacts people at all. It almost never happens. Like, it's statistically, it's insignificant that it, if it does. It's not a word that people are referring to themselves as. It is a word that other people apply to that person. And the reason why they apply the word to that person is because they feel that they have been tricked or trapped. That is why. Because of their own insecurity with their own sexuality, with the fact that they haven't done enough to learn about themselves, haven't mastered themselves enough, they do not know how to interpret the situation, and then they end up using this term to describe the person they're in an engagement with, and then that can lead to sexual harassment, physical harassment, physical assault, sexual assault, or even the person getting killed. In my mind, you just shouldn't have addressed the, the word trap. Like, you just shouldn't have done it. Because you didn't do enough, unfortunately, but... At least he said he doesn't like the word, even though his reasoning I don't think was that great. Maybe it was a strategic way to talk about it and bring it up in a negative light. That wasn't too far for, you know, the fucking weebs in the chat, but... Uh, the next question is, I get, you know, the question is, I'm talking about femboys. We're lecturing about femboys. Professor Lando, are you a femboy? We will be providing you some uh, contextual media uh, for reference. So... Um, in, yeah. in my research, uh, I don't know. I, Astolfo as a character is just, I don't know, dude. It's, he's so boring at this point. I'm sorry. He's like Babby's first femboy in media. I'm just, I'm so tired of it. In fembology, I, uh, was in the field, some anthropological work as a femboy. And this is me. Wait, really? Um, Paul? Practicing the art of fembology in the field to classify someone as a femme boy? Is there a ratio of, of, of time spent dressing up feminine, wearing makeup, doing feminine things versus being, you know, masculine or just being, you know, themselves as in male? Um, That's a good question. So like, for instance, if there is a person who presents masculinely, like the majority of the time in their day to day life, essentially all the time, but they happen to like cosplay every now and again as like a femboy or whatever. I don't think that you can call that person a femboy necessarily, at least not as a descriptor of their like aesthetic. They've just, you know, dressed like a femboy once before or a couple times before, right? Essentially, for someone to be a femboy, you have to talk the talk and also walk the walk. You know, you gotta live that life because uh, it is a difficult one to live. And, you know, just kind of like fronting like you're a fucking femboy when you don't know what's up kind of appropriating you know my culture is not your pro i'm just kidding they, it doesn't really matter to me too much that seems like gatekeeping to me and that doesn't seem right is every once in a while enough to be a femboy you i was joking essentially if somebody wants to identify as a femboy and literally never dress up femininely i don't know that this is necessarily a bad thing like it doesn't affect me i don't really care but uh usually it's in regards to other people calling other people femboys where this conversation might come up. I wanna say that you can just be a femboy no matter how much. Do I have to constantly shave my body to be a femboy every day? Do I even need to do it at all? I don't know, saying it out loud, I wanna say no. <clears throat> Once a femboy, always a femboy. Well, body hair isn't inherently masculine, but obviously we're, we're not getting in the weeds here. I think a femboy lecture would not be really complete without some mention of popular references and in pop culture, aka femboys. Uh, as you can see here, I have um, <laughs> ample uh, artifacts of uh, a, a certain character named Astolfo from Fate Grand Order. I gotta make sure not to draw this too quickly to, as to avoid rousing suspicion. 
Ostolfo, Rider nice. of Black. I really like Ostolfo as a character, but I would hate to boil down Ostolfo. I've never seen the media that Ostolfo's from. I've never seen it. I've j literally just seen images. That's it. Ostolfo to simply being the gateway drug of femboys. I do think that, that true, it, he you is know, the entry you need point, to acknowledge apparently. that Ostolfo is, is, is sort of that. Is the marijuana of femboys, the gateway femboy. Let's throw up some examples. Hidori from Blend S. I recently started playing this game. Venti from Genshin Impact. Venti from Starbucks. Cloud from Final Fantasy VII. Sasha from Animal Crossing. <laughs> to talk about the fact that them boys- The fucking bunny from Animal Crossing, dude. Come in all different shapes and sizes. We, we, we talked about like, do I need to be shaven every day? Do I have to be, you know, this traditional femboy look all the time? I want to say no. I think I think that's the right answer. Well, that's oh. just because Professor Lando, if you're even a professor, you're just not willing to put in the work. That's what I think. You're lazy, actually. Just For me personally, enjoy my femboys to be a little more masculine. So this is going to be controversial. You know, some characters in anime, their build and voice are basically just a girl. AKA Hirari from Bungus, which is fine. You know, you, to be a femboy, there's a spectrum. But to me, these, these, these characters are just femboy in name uh, for all extensive purposes in their media. Yeah, they're finos, femboy in name only. <laughs> there is simply another female character. Why even make them a femboy? And again, there are some men out there that are very feminine, very Fem feminine presenting, and that's fine. This is a based take. So thank God we were getting a based take from Professor Lando. You don't have to be literally like one to one a girl to be a femboy. Like in, in that way, I wouldn't be considered a femboy, even though my aesthetic presentation, outside of the fact that I don't go so hard on my makeup, I would have to like do vocal training to have a feminine voice. I would have to, well, luckily I don't have to shave that much because I just, my body hair is not very noticeable and I don't grow a big amount of it. I don't think I would be considered a femboy. Like I would have to act more feminine the way that i carry myself would have to be more feminine the way i walk all this kind of shit so i wouldn't be considered one if it was literally like you just have to be a girl but you have your assigned male at birth you know so i do appreciate i'm saying that in terms of being a femboy don't be so worried about being uber feminine cloud is a perfect example of my ideal femboy maybe because i relate to the character more physically mentally uh, I think that's part of it. Also, so so what's interesting about this is that women have to deal with this a lot in media, actually. Unrealistic beauty expectations are a thing that feminists and women have talked about for a long time. And that like all of the women that are up on like billboards and advertisements and that are modeling are literally, they're essentially like either incredibly gifted genetically or they are doing all kinds of labor and spending all kinds of money to look a certain way. And it's not really attainable for a lot of women. So in the same way, it's an unrealistic beauty standard, but applied to, you know, assumed men now in that to be a femboy you essentially just have to look like a girl which is actually really hard for a lot of amap people to do you have to shave you'd have to do vocal training you'd have to get like facial feminization surgery for some people you'd have to like do like training in regards to your personality there is so much stuff that you would have to do to actually meet the beauty standard that a lot of depictions of femboys in media are like set at and it's just not attainable for a lot of people and in that way you just end up for no real reason causing people mental anguish causing people to feel less than causing people to think they're not meeting expectations and then therefore are not worthy enough or are not a good enough femboy this is literally what women have been fighting against in regards to depictions of women in media and in society it's almost like if we defetish femininity we help everybody i've been saying this for a long time um i would like to cap this lecture by simply saying that i believe the taint is the male version of cleavage um <laughs> where where the mound you know what are you, you talking talk about? about purple mountain majesty you know the sort of mound um the, the the great american dream rather where the taint meets the top of the balls that is like a golden zone um i do think that is sort of like the male version of cleavage, and uh, now that I'm thinking about it, I might just be gay. Let's go. Listen, I appreciate Professor Lando 
for doing what he does. Uh, while I do think he might have missed the mark in some ways, especially in regards to the trap conversation, uh, it is certainly not the worst video on the topic. And, and I hope I was able to, as somebody who literally, you know, walks the walk and not just talks the talk when it comes to femboys, I hope, you know, you've been able to, you know, get some insight. I just want to see what these comments look like. Cross-dressing as a female can exclusively be formed by males, since it's one of the most masculine actions that exists. No, that's not true. You could be non-binary and cross-dress. I'm sorry. I've defeated your argument once again with facts and logic easily. Being into a girl that looks like a man, tomboys, this is not necessarily the case in my estimation. Tomboys still look like women. So you're thinking of mask girls. Tomboys still look like women. They just look like more masculine versions. That's not a girl that looks like a man. So I, you, your, your heart's in the right place, okay? But you're not quite there yet. You don't have the prerequisite education you haven't gotten to that course yet perhaps you didn't even read the syllabus it's okay people make mistakes anyway like i say always glad to assist professor lando in his teachings unfortunately they're you know as a professor that seems to traffic in a variety of different concepts uh, that he's attempting to teach people you can't know everything and it's certainly a valiant effort to try but it would seem that I know a bit more, and, and as a result, I hope that my information I was able to deliver alongside Lando's I was helpful to some. Anyway. <laughs> this video is Connor Call It a Zinka Blue. Congratulations on your second win. The first one was all the way back in October of 2021. It's been a long time coming, and it finally came. Thanks for the continued support. If you would like to be the next Connor Call It, all you gotta do is follow me on Twitter at ConnorCC. Retweet my video links when they go live. Same deal as always. Remember to subscribe to the channel, put all notifications on when you hit the bell, leave a like. If you'd like, comment something radically in defense of fanboys down below in the world, and I'll see you in the next one.